Welcome to Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show. Today, we got Morgan Zanotti. She is the co-founder of Primal Kitchen. If you are not feeling caliente, get ready. I don't care if you're watching or listening. No, here's the deal. If you haven't heard of Primal Kitchen before, it's the fastest growing health and natural product brand in the wellness industry. Yes, I said it, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't been following me for a while, well, you already know the deal. They have the best foods, sauces, condiments, olive oils, and many more things. Morgan, Morgan, thank you for being on the show. How are you? I'm great. I'm blushing over here. Quite an intro. So nice of you. Thank you. Hey, you know what? You deserve it because my friend, I commend you for what you have done. And I just get goosebumps of the excitement of, of having the privilege to interview you today. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes. So Morgan, let's get a little caliente warm up. If you could have one superpower, or if you have a superpower right now, what would it be? Or what is it that gets you thriving each and every day? Um, let's see if I could have one superpower. I live in LA, so it would probably be to fly because traffic <laughs> sucks. Um, and I think I'm a mom of two. I'm actually 30 weeks pregnant with my third boy. So I think being a mom is a superpower. Heck yeah. Congratulations. Thank wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. This is what's going on. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Morgan, there's so much to talk about today. Um, let me ask you. So for me personally, over 60% of my clients that I work with weekly performance coaching, mastermind coaching, they're females, they're entrepreneurs soon to be, and you know, the rest are male. So I want to know this on a personal level. What are the top five skill sets that every entrepreneur should have? I think my top one would be curiosity, quite honestly. Like, I think that um, led me to the path where I am today. We, you know, I met Mark when we had no business. We grew it to 50 million in sales and sold it to Kraft Heinz for 200 million, three and a half years later. So it was fast and furious. And I think, I think strong intuition, curiosity, those two things and a scrappy mindset. I always say like scrappy is my favorite word in business. We were super, super scrappy. We had a lean operation. You know, we hired people as consultants before we hired them full time. We kept an eye on the bottom line. I think that was really instrumental to our success. And I think it lessens the pressure of being an entrepreneur. If you can figure out how to just do things in a scrappy way before yeah. you go all in. And I mean, like to this day, we still don't work with agencies at Primo Kitchen. Like we did wow. all of our package design in-house. We never hired a social media agency. We did it. I started the Instagram account on my phone, you know, stuff like that. I think getting your hands dirty, being scrappy and curious is, is key. Is key. That's awesome. So this actually was not on my show notes, gonna, but I got to ask you because a lot of people are going to ask me or a lot of times, you know, people assume they prejudge. They're like, oh, Jason's lucky because of, you know, back in the day he started here and then he's done this, right? People can look at you and assume and say, well, Morgan's awesome because maybe she's, you know, had success in the past. People don't know. What would you say was the key ingredient when it came down to it? Like, especially questions that I ask from people that they say, what about funding, right? Was it something that you saved for a long time and say, you know what, Mark, we're going for it. Or did you, did you need help? Um, so we are super unique. The food space has terrible margins. If you're like breaking, I mean, you know, if you're breaking even, you're doing good. It's hard to grow a food company quickly and not be losing money. Um, but we actually never did have to raise money because Mark had an existing business. He had this vision. He wanted to launch a food company. He had a kind of an idea of what he wanted to do. I came in and provided branding strategy, built out the team and kind of ran the not kind of, I ran the day to day. That's such a, thing to do, right? Like such a woman thing to do, to be like, I kind of did this. It's like, no, <laughs> you did that. You should own it. Own um, it. Yeah. So, you know, that was that, but, um, funding wise, we were unique in that we didn't actually ever have to raise money. And the longest you can go without having to raise money, the better you are. Um, but you know, if you need something to get, we launched out of an existing company. So Mark was already selling supplements direct to consumer online. He had an audience, the keys to success. I would say, this is like always the, this is like the, how I built this question, right? Like, is it luck or is it 
timing, you know, how much do you rely on both of those? And I think that's where curiosity comes into play. And just also, I'm like a big believer in karma. We were, we had like a, we always had a strict no assholes policy and we, we were <laughs> nice to people, our partners, our everyone. And, yes. and if they weren't nice to us, we cut the cord quick. Like, yep. you know, there were some people I was like, we're out of here, like quick, really quick. I think relationships and like marriages and boyfriends and girlfriends and also employees, you tend to like end them six months too late. So that was always like something I tried to watch out for along the way. But look, Mark did a lot of work on the front end. It looks like an overnight success, but Mark had amassed, you know, 350,000 newsletter subscribers at the point in which we launched. So it was a overnight success 10 years in the making. So when you have that focus on brand building, that just that audience that you've been providing content for, for he was writing one pod or writing one blog post a day for, you know, eight years at the point in which we launched, like you had, we had a loyal, a loyal audience. We had people to talk to, we had the right product at the right time. And we had the right team. We put the right team in place and that was yeah. instrumental. That's amazing. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, I respect that a lot, especially what, what you said about people, you know, you know, knowing early on, just like cancer, to cut the cord, right? <clears throat> going off of the energy, going off of the respect, because if you're not getting the respect that you're giving others, like you said, karma, it karma. comes back, you know? Yes. So yeah. I respect that, Morgan. You know, a lot of people that may be watching this may, again, I go, you know, one of the biggest hurdles for me personally, <clears throat> being in, in television for the past, what, almost 16 years now, prejudgment, 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 right? Same thing. Oh, you're in shape now, Jason. I'm like, yeah, but I was also fat and full of stretch marks for 20 plus years. Don't prejudge. What would you say to somebody that is in a position where say they meet someone like Mark and let me re re reiterate for anyone watching or listening, Mark is the co-founder and, 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 you know, you can see all the information in the bio and the captions below, but what would you say is the ingredient that really made this thrive besides Mark and all your, see, most people are lazy. I, I, I hate to say it. They just are. They don't want to put the work. Do, would you say you were doing more than what you were, were paid for in the beginning? Meaning you were just day in, day out and just believed in it because a lot of people may say, well, Hey, I'm successful, Jason here, but I can't find a Morgan in my life. Yeah, I was definitely I mean, look, I started, I realized the opportunity and was in a position where I was doing other consulting work. So I took like, at first I was just a marketing consultant with Mark, right? And it grew into this, you know, he had hired another couple to kind of start the business with, and then that didn't work out. And I stepped into a full-time role after we had already established like a two-year working relationship. Um, and then I was, I remember, you know, telling Mark early on, I don't talk about this story often, Mark and I are like super close, so I can tell this, but I remember he was like, you're the president of the company. And I was like, okay, well, that's great, but presidents don't make what you're paying me. So you need to like up the ante, buddy. You know, like, so I think I did put in a lot at the beginning, um, but I doubled down on equity. I actually bought, um, put my some of my own money in when I wasn't in a position to do that. You know, like, so I, I invested in myself and doubled down early. And then, you know, I proved myself and then I asked for, you know, what I was worth and it was worth it. So I think that's, yeah. that's awesome. Do you, by any chance, do you read a lot or have you read a lot of books throughout your career that caused you to be this, you have such a great personality, strong personality, polite, and very, very knowledgeable. Where would you say you get your knowledge? Is it books? Is it your dad, your grandpa in life who, who might've. Oh, I think it's experience, a curiosity and people. My path is like very abnormal. I got a, an accounting degree. I worked as an accountant for like eight months, quit my job to waitress at my aunt and uncle's resort, Coons Franklin Lodge in Northern Wisconsin. Oh, wow. And then, you know, which is what every parent wants. Like we paid for college <laughs> and our daughter's like, peace out. And one year into oh, corporate world, hi. she's going to waitress, right? They didn't, they weren't, you know, they believed in my, my life path. But then I moved to South America for three years. So I was supposed to just move there for six months. And I ended up like, doing research for this political author and learning how to surf, traveling by bus from Argentina, the tip of Argentina, like Patagonia, Ushuaia, all the way to Colombia, 315 hours on a bus. I met three girls from Ireland. I joined on with them. And that really kind of 
you know, put me on like a different path, I would say, than most of my friends who graduated and got jobs right out of college. I wanted to launch like a surf yoga retreat in Ecuador. I owned the domain surfyogaecuador.com. I came home, I moved to Hawaii, got my yoga certification. And then, and then I had like a midlife, not a midlife, like a quarter life reverse culture shock crisis where I was just like, what am I doing? Like, I don't, I've been traveling and living off, I've been making like 12 grand a year, but living off eight grand a year. So I'm actually in like a better financial situation than a lot of my friends were in Chicago at the time who are 23, 24, making 60 grand a year, but spending 70 grand a year. Right. Right. Um, But I just felt really like really behind all my peers. Like I didn't belong even anywhere in the U S I didn't know where I belonged. Um, I ended up at an advertising agency in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like I got the job through a friend of my uncle's and I really like just dove in and I had success there. And and then I went to quit and moved to California. I surfed Lake Michigan in the winter (laughs) and I was like, what am I doing? Like, why am I here? You know, I got to get out of here. So I moved to California and then I had never been here before at 28. I was like, mom, I just broke up with my boyfriend of like two and a half years. I'm 28. Like what Midwest girl does this? I'm moving across the country where I know no one. I need to like freeze my eggs and like get my shit together, you know, but I ended up moving out to California. They kept me on at the advertising agency remote. And I went to run marketing, which was a position I was not even remotely qualified for, for a brand called Kavita. Um, They make a sparkling probiotic drink. They sold to PepsiCo a couple of years ago. Um, So I went to run marketing for them, learned a lot. I met Mark there rebranded a spinning this company owns the trademark spinning and you know just kind of got into it so I wanted to be a naturopathic doctor I thought I wanted to be a sex therapist I was like maybe I should be a nurse you know I really spent my 20s like trying to understand who I was as a person and talking to a lot of people always talking to a lot of people but definitely not like a linear path here. This is like wow. a very, yeah. yeah. God, now you got me, you, you got me, you took me to so many places. You're such a great <laughs> storyteller. Let me ask you this. Well, obviously I'm going to ask you this because I am Spanish. De España y parte de Puerto Rico. Hablas oh, yeah. un poquito. Un poquito. Okay. Que bien, <laughs> que bien. Okay. Que tal? It was a lot better 10 years ago. It's terrible now, but okay, yes. okay. Me encanta tu energía. <laughs> <laughs> Muchas gracias. De nada. Um, you también. Muchísimas gracias a ti, Morgan. Um, let me ask you, I mean, God, you know, the more I asked you in the beginning, you kept on saying the word curious, curious. You're such a curious cat. You remind me a little bit of, um, And this is, and I say this in a positive because some people are indifferent about this person. I did a show a few years ago. I was one of the uh, celebrity trainers with, uh, uh, what was it? With Jillian Michaels. You have a lot of this fire in you. And I I just respect anyone that can go like this in in a roadmap. And then you just reach this pinnacle of happiness, success. I mean, you're about to be a mom of three, right? You have a thriving business. You have a heck of a personality. And this is the stuff that people need to, here right and i love that you're just being honest saying look i i had to wake up and realize what the heck am i doing right it's normal right what do you do morgan when do you get stress anxious overwhelmed because you don't i don't know you don't come off like someone oh that's- yeah of course i do i'm human like we're here <laughs> on this planet having a human experience I tend to default to anxiety. I think I live in the future. I'm like very optimistic, probably more on like the visionary entrepreneur side. Um, And I think I don't have a lot of like shame or regret because I don't spend any mental energy in the past. I need to spend more mental energy in the present. I live a lot in the future. Like when I used to not be able to fall asleep and I'd lay in bed and be like, okay, I'm going to like imagine like my perfect life or my perfect job or my perfect day. And that's how I would fall asleep. And I realized like, I think that was really instrumental in like shaping the perfect life, the perfect job, the perfect. I remember at one point thinking like, I got to be careful what I'm dreaming about here. Cause this shit's coming real. And <laughs> if I'm not like setting the bar high enough in what I'm aiming for, am I going to be like doing myself a disservice? Like I remember thinking when I worked at Kavita, like maybe I could leave and be a marketing consultant. And then like when I did that, I was like, maybe I can launch my own brand. And then I did that. And I'm like, okay, you got to be careful what you're thinking all the time. You know, I think these things have a way of 
materializing. And I'm not a big, like, I'm not a big, like vision board person, just, but I do, I have noticed that. So that's something I remind my team of often. It, it, that's amazing. Let me, and I, I asked you this earlier, are you, first of all, before I ask you, do you read much or have you read many books like on self-help or not really? I went through like a huge self-help book phase in my twenties and now I'm in a huge romance novel phase. So nice. this is where I'm at in life. This is like, like a big joke among all my friends. I like, I think when you're my therapist one time called me triple type a, and I don't, I feel like I'm pretty laid back, but I definitely have like the drive of maybe a triple type a person. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think I, sometimes reading too much can just be like a really heady experience. And I actually need to like, I don't like really watch any TV shows. I, you know, I need like to actually like escape maybe a little more and enjoy things a little more instead of being like, I got to be the, you know, I see it with parenting. I'm like, I read this book and then I have to be the perfect parent. And like, you got to do this the right way. And there's just always this like quest for doing everything the right way. And that can be exhausting and just not fun i i agree it can be very much like having a boss like a a a micromanagement you know sorry micromanagement like i am a stifler you know i have a routine you know and and when a lot of people ask me well how have you succeeded in in eight or nine of, of different businesses that you have and throughout the years and i'm like it wasn't that i was better than anybody else i just like yourself was a dreamer i went for it and I'm still constantly growing, but I'm very selective on what I read, what I watch, and what kind of energy I yeah. bring into my life, right? Yeah. A lot of people I interview, like, I could be honest with them. I'll be like, hey, thanks for that. I'm never going to talk to them again, you know? Yeah. Before jumping on this, I was already like, hey, we want to do more of this. Why? Yeah. It's totally. all about energy. If you're enhancing my life and vice versa, Hey, you know what? We might be impacting other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I tell my clients each and every day, if you were to pass away tomorrow, what is the legacy you want to leave? Right. Oh, for sure. How do you want to leave this planet earth? Um, you, are you lot- looking for book things though? Or are you curious? Like if there were any like shaping books for me or anything like that? No, you, I, I got to tell you this. So I'm a big fan of Napoleon Hill. And uh, one of the first books I read, because a lot of what you're saying is kind of like what the book is about. It's kind of tripping me out in a positive light. So the first book I read was Think Rich, Grow Rich, right? Mm-hmm. It was many years ago. And a lot of times, again, I talk about assumptions. People think like, oh, it's to make money. I'm like, yes, it is to make money, but you have to become rich within, right? Yeah. To get rich tangibly with financial me- means. Fast forward, I've read other books and I just finished a book called uh, The Laws of Success. 700 page book. Let me tell you something, Morgan. <laughs> about 70% of that, in this what 20 minute conversation, you pretty much are living it. Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 yeah. it talks about anyone and everyone that's been successful, whether it was Thomas Edison, Lincoln, whether it was uh, Rockefeller, right? And when you see other people's stories, right? And you obviously are living your life without copycatting someone, it's just like, whoa, you're making what I call life, your own auto suggestion of factual action. Meaning you said it, Hey, I have anxiety. I think into the future. That's part of the reason why you are where you are today. Cause you woke up excited. You made your dreams come true. Right. Yeah. So that is amazing. So, so I got to ask you, what is next for primal kitchen? Obviously the biggest, latest news that I'm aware of, and I, I'm excited to be on your show soon, is the Primal Kitchen podcast. How awesome is that? Yeah, so, it's fun. For so, me personally, it's fun. Probably not. It's definitely not the biggest thing for Primal Kitchen. We've been podcasting for a long time, but it's been really fun for me um, to have an avenue to just connect with cool people. So we look forward to having you on there soon. But um, yeah. yeah, that's fun. But Primal Kitchen, I would say for the company, innovation is always like, our most fun thing. So launching new products to market, we have like a plant-based dairy-free queso that's recently in market. We're getting into some squeeze formats actually, which is sounds kind of not the sexiest innovation, but it's super, um, it will probably be a big win for us. Um, So, and just exploring like what categories we want to head into next. I think that's 
you know, it's still very much, we're three years post acquisition. I'm still running the company, but within craft. And they've been really like accommodating and letting us continue to run the company the way we were running the company and owning innovation is a big part of that. So that's always just fun to see what we're going to come up with next. Cause we're kind of all over the grocery store and I think we do a good job of innovating. So yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. That's the most fun part. Yeah. I really love, um, you know, your packaging, your packaging is so amazing. We did and that in house with a graphic designer. Like I did that project. Like it was me and one graphic designer who's still on staff and still does. Really? Yeah. And really? it, yeah, we rebranded recently, like tweak things. We haven't done a huge rebrand, but we tweak things and did it all ourselves. So that always is nice. It's amazing. Congratulations on Thank that. You. Congratulations on everything. It's just, I'm a huge stiffler when it comes to presentation you know, and it's the experience you give someone. And like I tell people that argue about pricing, you pay for what you get in life, right? You want quality? Primal Kitchen Foods has quality. Primal Kitchen Foods has amazing sauces that are not only good for you and healthy, but anyone that complains, oh, well, Jason, you know, I can get this sauce for $3 less. I'm like, what are you putting in your body, bozo? Yeah. I know. And, and, and I, there's no other way to say it, you know, and that's why I respect you. I respect the brand. I respect Mark on what you guys have done thus far. Primal Kitchen is just limitless into what you guys are able to do and what's to come. And that's why I respect you. I respect Mark. I respect the brand because in life you truly pay for what you get, right? What you put in your body is just as important as what you put on your body. Like I'm a huge, by the way, you have great skin. Well, tell us, what is your secret? Is it Primal Kitchen Foods? Is it Olay? <laughs> no, I like don't even wash my face. I shower like <laughs> three times a week. I wash my hair like once a week. I'm very, um, I say I'm going to like become more high maintenance and I just can't seem to prioritize it. I don't know. I think it's probably a Zoom filter or something. Oh, uh, you're funny. Uh, yeah. uh, let me ask you, how do you manage being a full-time, because you work full-time uh, primal kitchen you have the podcast you're about to have a third kid and you're married correct yeah yeah how whoo let me take a seat for this one how do you manage it all and still thrive or is there some you know holes with it that you're like man everything is great but I wish I had more time say with my husband everything's great but I wish I had more time with my kids like talk to uh to my moms out there yeah, I think I would say everything's great. I just wish I didn't have mom guilt, which <laughs> I think is a thing, right? Um, no, I would say, you know, you don't manage it all well. Like some weeks you prioritize work more and some weeks you prioritize your kids more and you drop the ball elsewhere. But my husband is super supportive and um, he's not in like a nine to five job. He contributes like in other ways so that he picks up a lot of the slack and we have help. Like I know when the whole like lean in movement was going on, I kind of, there's a lot of people who are pushing back like, oh, oh, women are just supposed to pick up more like and, you know, with with what help. And I, I think that people who don't talk about the fact that, like, you know, my husband doesn't have to commute to a nine to five and he can pick up the slack with the kids and we can afford a nanny like that's a privilege yeah. and does keep me sane. And that was a decision we made. Like our kids are young. We wanted to put the time there. So, you know, I think that's the reality. Um, that's and awesome. I don't want to downplay that yeah. because and I you, know not everyone's that lucky, but it, it is definitely helpful for us. Absolutely. So what do you say as a whole? And I say this because I would say probably 25% and not even people that I work with, but even my friends, I've noticed a pattern in the past 10, 12 years where the wife or the girlfriend is either a working longer hours or B possibly has a better position or makes more money than their significant other, right? It, 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 I think that's okay as long as you have a partner, like you said, that is working, supporting, et cetera. Like, what do you tell to, what do you, what do you tell women out there that feel like, oh, well, the man needs to do every, you know, demanding people? What do you, what, what advice do you give to moms out there? I think you got to do what works for you. Like, if you think, you know, the man needs to do everything, then you got to find a husband who's on board for that plan. You know, and I think like, look, when we sold Primal Kitchen, this was interesting. People, it was a big, you know, a big, it was a big financial 
win for our family, for my husband and I, right? And people were asked, they were like, oh, is Adam okay? Like, how is he going to like handle this? You know, like I was shocked. I'm like, are you guys kidding me? Like, he's fine. But like, is the male (laughs) ego like that sensitive that there are people who are actually like, oh, you just had all this success. Is your husband going to be able to survive? You know, like that was the initial reaction from some folks that I knew who I totally respect. These aren't like, you know, sexist, like terrible human beings. Like that was just like a real, you know, a real thing. So I think that dynamic like could have been really challenging for us, but I think, you know, I don't have like an, my husband's not like an egomaniac and his values, he doesn't value like his number one value in life. Isn't like making money. And I'm way more like opportunistic. And, um, so we're a good balance. And I think I picked like a good partner for me and, you know, he's a great dad and super involved with the kids, our youngest 18 months old. And he defaults to Adam, like in the middle of the night, if he's crying, sometimes I can't even calm him. He's like, daddy, where'd daddy go? Where'd daddy go? You know? So I have a very, Adam's one of five. He's a family guy. Um, he's a great dad. So that's his value, like family loyalty. He played football for the air force Academy. He's like, a, you know, he's just not an egomaniac husband who can't handle his wife's success. So yeah, you're blessed. You're blessed. And you just said, it. You, <laughs> I am know, blessed. you know, we all have different needs and wants, right? Uh, whether it's your friend, your business part, sorry, your business partner, your, your significant other, and you have to be with someone that not only uh, brings the best in you, but you're in peace, right? you like, you're in peace. You know, when you're working or probably traveling, you know, you don't have to worry about anything because you know, your kids, your husband, everyone's taken care of, right? You have that safetyness. Some people need, may need other things and that's okay, right? Yeah. And that's okay. Whatever works for each individual. Um, I know I asked you earlier, obviously you answered me regarding how do you deal with stress, this, that, and the other thing. Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you, what is like, I guess, say you get a bad moment. You just got off the phone with a nasty potential client, like, what do you do to unwind to wrap today's awesome interview? Like, give the audience, like, what's your go-to or do you put some salsa? Like, Venga caliente, vamos a... Oh, I wish. I wish I was like that cultured in Latin. That would be great. Um, No, I walk with my... I mean, one particular best friend here, I, we could like walk for two hours and then forget something and call each other on our way home. So I think... I lean in on those, like uh, those relationships and, you know, one in particular, I feel like if I'm really stressed or even if it's just some drama stuff that's building up, I'm a verbal processor, very much like a talk through things like need to think out loud. So therapy and friend therapy, paid therapy and friend therapy. I think those are key for me. I'm a big therapy fan, like huge. So love it. That's awesome. And, and and I actually agree because I enjoy that too. And uh, any last words for anyone out there, uh, whether they're watching, listening, that you just want to say, you know what, before I drop this mic, here you go, baby. (laughs) Yeah, I would say stay curious, stay scrappy and tap your network and tap your non-network. Reach out to people like you're going to learn so much more just through conversations. Don't be afraid. People like me right now, one of my favorite things to do is talk to literally my favorite part of my job that's not part of my job besides the podcast is talking to entrepreneurs who are like facing strategic challenges and helping them learn from what I learned from. That's how I was successful. I called people and they helped me. So don't be afraid to reach out. Yes. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart, Morgan, you rock, you shine and keep inspiring because you, my friend are a force to be reckoned with. Thank you for being on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. It's super fun. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.